How to draw the animated nexus, now in color. If you think you're seeing double, relax. This volume of How to Draw Nexus was first published in 2006 as a way to promote my longtime goal of seeing Nexus as an animated series. With this new expanded edition, along with its modified title of How to Draw the Animated Nexus, you'll see many of the same model sheets from the previous volume, now in color, with added comments as to their creation, the same spiral bound format to make drawing from it much easier, and the many new additions fresh off the animation table. With so much added to realize my one day goal of a Nexus animated series, we thought a new expanded edition would be the way to go. To date, there is no TV series. And if there ever is, my two minutes of completed animation, along with model sheets, layouts, storyboards, and whatever else contained in this book would certainly be the blueprint for it. Ever forward, Steve Rude. Hi folks, I'm Mike Barron. And I'm Steve Rude, and we're coming to you live from the <clears throat> Steve Rude studio in Phoenix, Arizona. <clears throat> Mighty Mike Barron is visiting from his, uh, from his uh, town and his current location in... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, undisclosed lower, undisclosed <clears throat> somewhere in Colorado <clears throat> so we're coming to you from my studio here and we're going to talk about some of the things we're up to uh, Mike's going to go first well uh, dude and I created Nexus uh, 40 years ago and we're both surprised to find it going strong today it may be the longest live independent superhero comic ever uh, dude has been growing as a writer for a number of years uh, and he's going in a different direction than I am, but we remain close friends and we're both working on our own independent Nexus projects. Some of you may be familiar with the first issue of Triplets that shipped about last month uh, that was illustrated by Kelsey Shannon. There will be three issues of Triplets and Dark Horse will collect them. I've also completed a Nexus graphic novel that Dark Horse will publish with the artist Richard Bonk. I'm very proud of that. And I'm planning a new Nexus project with Sergio Cariello. Sergio Cariello, of course, is a longtime Marvel and DC artist, best known for writing the Action Bible, which is probably the best-selling comic book book of all time. Uh, in about three weeks, we're going to launch Thin Blue Line, which is a graphic novel I wrote about two police officers trying to survive a night in a riot-torn city. It's going to blow your mind, folks. There's no preaching. It's all story. It'll suck you in. My artist, Joe Arnold, is a full-time police officer. And he still managed to finish the book faster than most professionals. Our anchor and colorist is Jeff Slemons, a brilliant artist in his own right. And when that's finished, we're going to begin the campaign for the second Florida Man graphic novel. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, I've written three Florida Man novels, which are available on Amazon. Uh, and the first Florida Man graphic novel, possibly the funniest comic book ever produced. I guarantee you will burst out laughing. <clears throat> Mike also has <clears throat> an actual novel, not a graphic novel, but a novel that he's written on Nexus. <clears throat> so I encourage you all to see something that's unique to the world of Nexus, which is just, uh, just words. Just words, <clears throat> folks. Contact me if you're interested, and I'm almost finished with the second Nexus novel. Coming up is a couple of things <clears throat> from Rude Dude. Uh, <clears throat> the first that I always have to alert you about is <clears throat> the Magnum Opus. This is at, this was a story that was written by Mike and myself. <clears throat> and <clears throat> the uh, the art is all mine, the inking is all mine, the lettering is all mine. <clears throat> and, we, and not only that, but we, all, we also have a section in the back that uh, <clears throat> people don't bother with anymore. <clears throat> that is... Um, <clears throat> An extras column. Some of this stuff is a lot of the latest goings on. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> uh, some convention appearances. <clears throat> and we actually have a letter column in the back. Tell me a single person who doesn't miss the letter columns in comics. <clears throat> there they are right there. <clears throat> so everything that I've ever wanted to see in a comic book that they're not doing anymore, it's in this <clears throat> The Coming of Gormando. This book is <clears throat> over 300 pages long. And it weighs a ton. That book will stop a bullet, folks. <clears throat> and it could conceivably be used as a weapon. <clears throat> also coming up, <clears throat> this is something I did years ago, but we have a lot of DVDs for sale here. 
<clears throat> this is actually a, a three minute promo animation pilot <clears throat> that I did uh, <clears throat> on my own in $60,000 later. <clears throat> we condensed it into a DVD. <clears throat> you open it up and you get a little, little small Bible inserted in here <clears throat> and the DVD itself. <clears throat> So that's something we've we've got in the store. Um, another big thing that we're doing here is um, there's how to draw a Nexus, and it's mostly mostly related to the the animated version of Nexus. There's a whole bunch of model shoots that I did in pre-production for the show, and the eventuality that it is a show because so far it hasn't been one, but we remain very hopeful because we're not dead yet and we got a lot more work to do. So that's the promo for that right there. New expanded edition. We're going to have color inserted in there. And of course, we have a page from the next gigantic volume of Nexus. Boy, that weighs a lot. I'm ready to have a Harney in here. Um, and it's called, the follow-up volume is called The Battle for Thune World. And it's going to be identical to the book I just showed you. Here is a preview sneak page that shows you how big the pages are being drawn, inked, and lettered. Uh, the story is from me and Mike, but I'm doing the scripting on it. And we're, we guarantee you, as we always have, the ride of, uh, of your proverbial life in all these books. Um, one thing Nexus has always prided itself on um, is immediacy, uh, immediacy uh, always moving the story forward and very strong characterization because if you, if you don't have those three basic things you don't have something that's going to interest people and without interest you're going to have uh, you're going to have what we have in a lot of independent movies these days uh, movies that make no sense people that you don't care about and getting lost in what the story is apparently about uh, Mike's got a few more things to talk about uh, do you have any more things you want to bring up well yeah you know uh, uh, my publisher for most of my novels is Wolfpack. I'm very happy with Wolfpack. They've published eight of my biker novels so far and, and three of the Florida Man novels. Mm -hmm. I'm working on the ninth biker novel. It was inspired by the Tiger King, in which Josh Pratt is hired to find a missing Bengal tiger. Uh, the next Florida Man novel, uh, it's about Gary. And if you don't know about the Florida Man novels, I mean, just go on Sorry. online and go to floridaman.com. It's an aggregate site that lists every Florida Man story that ever was. And there are tens of thousands of them, and they're off the wall. They're crazy. Uh, a typical one is Florida Man claims syringe found in rectum is not his. <laughs> Florida Man leads police on three and a half hour chase through Walmart attic. And that actually made it into the novel. But the next Florida Man novel is about how Gary, Gary is a, a, a good-hearted redneck, lives in a trailer down by the swamp. He's always looking for a quick deal. He's always looking for his next buck. Well, he invents a car called the Bull Weevil. Now, the Bull Weevil is an insect that used to plague the cotton crops. And it was all but extinct until Gary brought it back. The Bull Weevil is a vehicle that runs on cotton. Why? Because if you ever run out in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. you always have your underwear. <clears throat> That's typical Baron writing right there. <clears throat> uh, something that no one else would ever think of. <clears throat> and constant angles on, on character that really no one else would ever think of. Um, <clears throat> so we're, we're, we're just going really strong right now. You can see we're the best of friends. We're always in touch. Um, <clears throat> Uh, adults always work things out in their, if there's any kind of a conflict, <clears throat> which is more than I can say for the current political climate. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we're just going to keep going because, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people um, <clears throat> kind of look at people that have been in the business for uh, over 40 years as, you know, has-beens or <clears throat> like they were talking about the Dewey Brothers the other day, dinosaurs. Well, <clears throat> this is a bunch of garbage. Whatever period you're in at this moment <clears throat> should be the prime of your life. And if you still have the spark, if you still have the drive, and you still have the willingness to put the work in, if you want to find a story for anything, open up any daily newspaper, and you'll find about 10 stories right away. So everything we, we do is, is kind of current in a way, because that's the stories that are going on at the moment. And those are the stories that people can relate to most, because they're current. Uh, I have a story coming up in Return to Earth, the third gigantic volume of these Nexus books. 
that is pulled right off the headlines and it <clears throat> and involves a, a rather mega rich pervert uh, with the initials uh, J.E. So if you can figure that out, you have something to look forward to with uh, Return to Earth. We're just going to keep doing these things until we drop. And we're so proud of what we do. So I hope you're, you're going to be uh, on board with this and uh, get excited about how excited we are with what we're doing. And to the future and to the stars beyond. <clears throat> Anything else you want to talk about, man? Well, I'd say that uh, Dude is correct when he says a good story is uh, both immediate and timeless. And the perfect ending to any story should come as both a complete surprise and yet, in retrospect, inevitable. Yeah, in other words, it makes sense all along, but <clears throat> it's uh, the ride has to be filled with uh, absolute, things of absolute unexpectedness. And a lot of people have a way of writing where they they, they write linear. They uh, they actually write it in in real time. And uh, they they always say writers always say this: if it surprises me, it's going to surprise the audience. So that's the creative venture we're on. We've been doing this for a long time, but the best is yet to come. We firmly believe that. And thanks for tuning in. If you guys have any questions that you might want to ask me or Mike. Uh, send them in, and we'll do our best to answer them, okay? So in the meantime, adios for me and my parent. You take care.